This is part two of my electric swap dirt bike. This is a 2010 KTM 65 that I'm currently working on electric swapping, and we just got some new parts in for it. First, I got brake pads for the front and rear and rear wheel bearings, because if you watched the last video, I got the front wheel bearings done, but did not have rear wheel bearings. Also, I have a throttle now. Huge update. We just had basically all the Econic Cycles parts come in. So let's open this up and see what we got. First, let's start with the smaller box. Okay, we got the box open. I think this is the far driver. And oh, yes, we would be correct. Oh, wow, this thing is big. It's much thicker than I expected. This is the 72680, which I knew would be thicker, but is actually the same format as the 72450. As you can see, 72680. Admire it well you can because it's probably the nicest it's ever gonna be. Now what else did we get in here? Ooh, motor bracket. We got the motor cradle, which you'll see why I ordered this later. It's gonna make chain alignment and all that super, super, super easy. This is probably wiring harness. Oh wow, man, I'm nailing these. Wiring harness, Ooh, front sprocket. That's very important. Uh, some screws, dongle, because I got the cheaper dongle version because I wasn't gonna pay an extra $50 just to have built-in Bluetooth. Now let's open the big one. Okay, got the second bigger box opened. Now let's see what's in here. This might just be the motor, which I'm assuming it is. Oh, baby. Oh, thank God. I thought these things were not gonna be long enough, but no, these phase wires are certainly long enough. We got a bracket. Here's the actual motor. Oh my, this baby is nice. So I should be able to push 20 kilowatt peak out of this thing. This is basically just an FW11, but built up more. As you can see, it's got an actual heat sink and it's just much thicker and better. So this thing's gonna actually pull like crazy, especially with the 72680. I can do 680 phase amps. Oh my, this thing's gonna fly. So in total, this motor cradle was $50. Motor was 370. This was 245 and sprocket was about 20. So about, just about 700 bucks with taxes in total. Let's get to installing these parts on the bike. Yeah, these things are completely done. So yeah, these new ones should be really nice. Okay, got the rear brakes fully together. So now that is good. So let's do the front brakes. Next, let's see if we can do a rear wheel bearings because these wheel bearings are shot. It's hard to tell on camera, but the whole wheel kind of goes, mm -hmm. And there we go, got it off. So now let's try to do these fateful wheel bearings. Finally, I got the sprocket side out. So the spacer is still stuck in the bearing, but it's gonna be way easier to get the spacer out with everything out. But yeah, it's pretty stuck in there. Basically everything's coated with PB Blaster because this thing was in there. So yeah, we're gonna get this off. As you can see, the sprocket side actually runs two bearings, uh, mainly just so it's stronger, I guess. I'm not exactly sure why. So yeah, that's better, but I'm trying to get this bottom bearing out and we're gonna see if it'll come out. Here's all the parts from the wheels, the old bearings, the middle tube, and then these two spacers here. So this, all this stuff I cleaned and we're gonna reuse. This is all garbage. And my new bearings are in the fridge over there, cooling down so that they fit into the wheel a little bit nicer. These ones actually came out pretty nice, probably because I used PB Blaster. Should have done that on the front because the front were hard as hell. But yeah, let's throw in the rear wheel bearings now. So here we go. We got the brake disc side and then the two sprocket side bearings. I'm gonna start with the brake disc side bearing. Okay, that bearing is in. So let's put, I think it's uh, the spacer. I don't know, I'll look back at the footage. So this spacer I think goes in here. Then we gotta put this thingy in, then put these two bearings in. Got the spacer and this thing in here. So we gotta drop one bearing in. Now I gotta tap that one all the way in and then put this one in there. Okay, both wheel bearings are fully in, so now this puppy should kinda just slide in here. Just like that, and now that's in there. So let's throw this all back onto the bike. Ok, 
Okay, got the axles through, got the axle sliders on. So now we just gotta torque this thing down to about one ugga dugga and we should be good. So I know all these parts are new, so they're gonna work. So I'm just gonna start mounting them. Basically the control is gonna go here, but like in the subframe, I'm gonna have to take off the subframe to get it in there. But I'm kind of really hoping it fits. Obviously it's hitting there, which I'm gonna cut off that whole thing. Cause that used to latch the air box closed, but we should be able to get it to fit right down here. I'm just kind of concerned because it's pretty thick. I can cut off that mount, but I think I'm gonna cut off that mount and see if it fits. If not, it's gonna go basically sideways over here and hopefully that fits. So I'm gonna pop off the subframe. So right now I'm cutting out the little air box latch so I can fit the controller in the back. We're gonna see if it fits, hopefully it will. Okay, so I got carried away. So I got the controller mounted. It is zip tied, but it is really, it's like really in there. These are some really heavy duty zip ties. The only one I don't like is this one, which I think I might be able to just cut and maybe connect it to here because I hate that you can see it when the seat goes here, unless I add in the air box. Here's my current dilemma. I'm trying to get these phase wires and as you can see, there's not enough space between the subframe and the controller. Yes, the controller sticks out a little bit, but the seat somehow like doesn't fit it. It fits into the notch of the seat. Not sure how, but it does. But I'm looking like I might have to do this, which I don't like, but the seat has good space between it, so I might be fine. So I didn't show it on camera, but I went ahead and test fitted the battery with the motor sitting down in here. Cause my idea is this motor has two rails on the bottom like that. And I'm basically gonna put two rails here and just bolt the whole motor down. And because those can slide, I can like align the chain perfectly, which is like one big thing I wanna do. So I actually have to cut out these motor mounts cause the motor can only go to here and it doesn't really fit well, but like barely fits. But if I can scooch another like inch forward, then it'll be perfect. So I'm gonna cut these out. Huge update, I shoved everything in, battery is in, motor, yes, it is huh, zip tied in right now, but that's basically where it's gonna sit. I got it straight in there. This is all gonna get cable managed and shoved in here and everything's out right now, but yes. Controller's in, battery's in, motor's in. So yeah, this is how everything's gonna sit. That's how the motor's gonna look. My next idea of what I'm about to do I'm actually about to cut the air box. Basically, I want the air box to still cover up this whole side because all this wiring is gonna be shoved in here. It's gonna be ugly. I'm gonna cut out this whole back part of the air box, all this where I don't need. So we're just gonna keep this sides and I'm gonna trim some other things in here, probably these tabs. Basically just gonna keep this mount and these mounts and that mount and it'll just cover it up, but it will still be fully open for all my wiring to sit. So let's cut that. Boom, it's done. Um, probably still gonna have to do more trimming but basically I'm gonna take this apart and see if I can get it to fit in there and cover everything up and it'll look really good. We actually got the air box on. I'm really surprised. I ended up just running the phase wire up. I really don't like that angle, but I think I'm just gonna cut a notch and run it how it was. But for now it'll be okay. I'm running it basically up along here cause the seat's gonna just sit in here, um, up along and down. I don't think the seat will hit it anywhere. Maybe here, I'm a little concerned, but I might be able to just slip it in. But yeah, it's looking really clean actually. And this is with all the plastics off. So I'm gonna throw them all back on now. Okay, it's so the next day I took out the battery and today we're gonna do motor mounts. But first I'm gonna change out this sprocket. I already cracked the sprocket loose. We're gonna throw on the 420 sprocket and then I'm gonna use the stock chain right now. Just gonna basically throw it on just so I can get it all aligned correctly and see how it's gonna go. I'm obviously not gonna use that chain. My new one's on the way. We're gonna start on the motor mount. The motor mount is arguably the most important part because it needs to be really strong and precise so that we don't have any chain issues. So we're going from the stock 11 tooth 35 sprocket. We're going up to a nine tooth 420 sprocket. Oh, that fits beautifully. It's one big old sprocket. And now we got to tighten this thing back down. And always remember on motors, it's lefty tighty, righty loosey because it's reverse thread. Okay, so I went ahead, got the sprocket on, torqued it down. We are all good. So right now I'm working on trying to align the chain. I'm using the old chain. Basically, I had this square edge vice gripped to my sprocket, completely level with it. And then I had the long part going straight down, straight all the way over to here. And then I lined the chain up with that and lined up this front sprocket. And then I basically just used a few zip ties, keep the motor exactly in that place. And I think I'm just gonna weld the motor cradle straight to the frame. Cause honestly, it'll be way easier 
I'd have to do way less work, but I just spent the last like 30 minutes getting this perfectly aligned. And I mean, it's 420 chain and I'm gonna be putting a DID 420 chain on it. So it's gonna be even a little bit wider. The tiny little bit of play that it probably has between the front sprocket and the rear sprocket should be fine. But these things are aligned as good as I could possibly get them. So I think I'm just gonna tack the motor in place and go from there. We actually got it tacked in. Honestly, like worst tack of my life. I had the welder settings wrong like five times and then I had my ground to the peg and it just was not grounding. So I grounded it to here, which I should have done in the beginning. But it's in there, little tack. I mean, motor's in there now, it's not moving. It's not strong, but it's not moving. Chain alignment. Let's see if you guys can even see that little focus. It's pretty good. Um, the thing is the chain roller like moves the chain over and makes it look weird, but it's actually pretty darn straight. Straight as I could possibly get it. And honestly, I think we'll be perfectly fine. So I'm gonna continue sanding, probably do a tack down here and then move on. Okay, the second tack is in there. That's more of a solid weld compared to the other one. But now the motor is completely held in there and I kind of just threw the chain on. Lyman's good actually. This chain is sadly too short. Maybe I can pull it in a little bit because it's fully out, but I would like to throw on this chain and like at least give it a little free spin, even though the sprocket and chain is completely cooked, but give it a little free spin just to see how it all moves. But yeah, we should be good and I'm gonna continue welding and I'll continue updating you guys. So we basically got it fully welded. It's welded here uh, and here and here. And then on the back there, I do want to weld on the insides of the frame, which will just add that little bit more. Thankfully, I didn't cut off these tabs because these are motor mounts, so they're really attached to the frame. So I just welded right to it. I mean, these welds aren't clean, but they'll hold this thing in here. So yeah, I'm going to weld a little bit more and then we should be good. Okay, so I'm attempting to put on the old chain just to get a couple test runs on, but it is quite a bit too short. I'm not going to lie. So I'm just going to go grab the new chain and try to put it on and see what size it needs. Brand new DID chain. This is a 130 link, I think. So it'll probably be a bit too big for this, but because this is a 50 tooth and I'm actually going with a 60 tooth, I will need a little bit longer chain. So I'm not gonna cut it. I'm just gonna test fit it, see if it kind of fits. Threw the master link in and I mean, um, it's pretty tight. It could probably be a little bit tighter. So, so we're gonna turn on the bike because I don't have any switches. I'm just basically gonna hotwire it and give it a little bit of throttle and see how it moves. Hopefully it doesn't explode. Okay. First startup, um, I'm using a razor blade to connect the ignition. Um, I'm not gonna spin it fast at all because I don't want this chain to blow up, but let's see here. It should be the right way. Oh yes. Really expected that to fall off. I mean, you see how freaking loose it is but that actually went really good. The chain alignment is actually basically perfect. I mean, I think I don't think I'll have a single problem with it, honestly. It is really good. Today, we got the controller and motor in, and we also installed them into the bike and got the bike running. But in the next video, you're gonna see basically this bike fully done and ready to go rip. So subscribe for part three.